Hello, everyone. Welcome to Celestial Chronicles, the channel where we explore the mysteries of the universe and the wonders of God. I'm your host, and today I have a special video for you. It's a sermon by a preacher who talks about the attributes of God as revealed in the Bible. He explains who God is, what he does, and how we should respond to him. This is a very important topic, because knowing God is the key to knowing ourselves and our purpose in life. So, let's dive in and learn more about the amazing God we serve. The preacher begins by saying that God is a spirit. What does that mean? It means that God has no body or physical form. He is invisible and cannot be seen. He is not like us, who have flesh and bones and hair and eyes. He is not like the things we see in nature, like trees and rocks and animals. He is not like the idols that some people worship, made of wood or metal or stone. He is a spirit, and he is the only true God. But how can we know a God who is invisible and has no form? How can we relate to a God who is so different from us? Well, the preacher says that God uses names and metaphors to reveal himself to us. He gives us words and images that help us understand something about him. For example, he calls himself Jehovah or Yahweh, which means I am. This name tells us that God is the one who exists by himself, who has no beginning or end, who is the source of all being. He also calls himself Father, which tells us that he loves us and cares for us as his children. He also calls himself Shepherd, which tells us that he guides us and protects us as his sheep. He also calls himself King, which tells us that he rules over us and has authority over us as his subjects. And there are many other names and metaphors that God uses to reveal himself to us in the Bible. So, God is a spirit, but he is also a person. He is not a thing or a force. He is not an impersonal energy or a cosmic principle. He is a person who has a name, who can be known and befriended. He is a person who has a mind, a will, and emotions. He is a person who speaks, acts, and relates. He is a person who loves, hates, and feels. He is a person who is alive, active, and involved. He is a person who is interested, concerned, and committed. He is a person who is real, personal, and intimate. But even though God is a person, he is not a human. He is not like us in every way. He is not limited or flawed or sinful like we are. He is not bound or restricted or dependent like we are. He is not weak or ignorant or helpless like we are. He is not subject or answerable or accountable to anyone or anything. He is God, and he is incomprehensible to human minds. He is beyond our understanding, our imagination, our logic, our language. He is transcendent, majestic, awesome, and glorious. He is the most high, the most great, the most holy, and the most worthy. The preacher then goes on to describe some of the attributes of God that show how he is incomprehensible to us. He says that God is eternal, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, holy, righteous, loving, good, and wise. These are big words, but they are important words, because they tell us what God is like and what he can do. Let's look at each one of them briefly. God is omnipresent. This means that God is everywhere at all times. He fills heaven and earth with his presence. He is not absent or limited by space. He is not confined or restricted or contained by anything. He is not far or near or here or there. He is everywhere, and he is always with us. There is no place where God is not. There is no place where we can hide from him or escape from him. There is no place where we can go without him or live without him. He is omnipresent, and he sees everything we do, hears everything we say, and knows everything we think. God is eternal. This means that God has no beginning or end. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. He is not affected or changed by time. He is not old or young or aging or dying. He is not past or present or future. He is eternal, and he exists outside of time. He created time, and he controls time. He knows the end from the beginning, and he works all things according to his eternal purpose. He is eternal, and he is always faithful, always consistent, always reliable, and always trustworthy. God is omniscient. This means that God knows everything past, present, and future. He never learns or forgets anything. He sees all things as they really are. He is not unaware or ignorant or mistaken or deceived. He is not surprised or confused or puzzled or perplexed. He is omniscient, and he knows us better than we know ourselves. He knows our thoughts, our feelings, our motives, our desires, our plans, our actions, our secrets, our sins. He knows our strengths, our weaknesses, 
our gifts, our needs, our joys, our sorrows, our hopes, our fears. He knows everything about us, and He loves us anyway. God is omnipotent. This means that God does whatever He pleases. He is the source of all power and authority. He controls all things according to His will. He is not limited or hindered or opposed or defeated. He is not dependent or needy or helpless or powerless. He is omnipotent, and He can do anything He wants. He can create and destroy, heal and hurt, bless and curse, save and judge. He can do miracles and wonders, signs and wonders, things that are impossible for us. He can do anything He wants, and He always does what is best. God is holy. This means that God is completely pure and separate from sin. He is different and glorious above all His creatures. He is the standard of moral perfection. He is not evil or wicked or corrupt or defiled. He is not guilty or ashamed or condemned or punished. He is holy, and He hates sin and loves righteousness. He is holy, and He demands holiness from us. He is holy, and He provides holiness for us through His Son Jesus Christ, who died for our sins and rose again for our justification. God is righteous. This means that God is always right and just in all His ways. He cannot do anything wrong or evil. He judges and rewards according to His law. He is not unfair or biased or partial or arbitrary. He is not cruel or harsh or oppressive or abusive. He is righteous, and He upholds His justice and His truth. He is righteous, and He defends the oppressed and the innocent. He is righteous, and He punishes the wicked and the guilty. He is righteous, and He forgives the repentant and the humble. God is loving. This means that God is not a tyrant or an enemy. He is merciful and gracious to His creatures. He forgives and saves those who call upon Him. He is not hateful or angry or vengeful or spiteful. He is loving, and He loves us with an everlasting love. He is loving, and He gave His only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, to die for us on the cross, so that we can have eternal life. He is loving, and He invites us to come to Him and receive His grace and mercy. God is good. This means that God is not cruel or harsh. He is generous and kind to all. He provides and sustains all things. He is not stingy or greedy or selfish or wasteful. He is not indifferent or neglectful or careless or reckless. He is good, and He gives us every good and perfect gift. He is good, and He meets our needs and satisfies our desires. He is good, and He works all things together for our good and His glory. God is wise. This means that God is not foolish or ignorant. He is the creator and inventor of all things. He is not irrational or illogical or unreasonable or absurd. He is not confused or conflicted or inconsistent or contradictory. He is wise, and he knows the best way to do everything. He is wise, and he guides us and teaches us his wisdom. He is wise, and he makes everything beautiful in its time. So, these are some of the attributes of God that the preacher talks about in this video. He tells us who God is, what he does, and how we should respond to him. He tells us that God is a spirit, a person, and incomprehensible to us. He tells us that God is eternal, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, holy, righteous, loving, good, and wise. He tells us that God is awesome, amazing, wonderful, and glorious. But what does all this mean for us? How should we react to this God who is so great and so good? Well, the preacher gives us two main responses that we should have towards God. He says that we should worship Him and seek His forgiveness. We should worship Him. This means that we should honor Him and praise Him and adore Him and thank Him and serve Him and obey Him. We should worship Him, because He is worthy of all our worship. He is the Most High, the Most Great, the Most Holy, and the Most Worthy. He is the Creator, the Sustainer, the Ruler, and the Judge of all things. He is the Lord, the King, the God, and the Father of all. He is the Alpha and the Omega, the Beginning and the End the first and the last. He is the one who was and who is and who is to come. He is the one who deserves all glory and honor and power and majesty and dominion and praise. He is the one who we should worship with all our heart, soul, mind, and strength. We should seek his forgiveness. This means that we should repent of our sins and trust in his grace. We should seek his forgiveness because we have sinned against him and offended him and dishonored him and disobeyed him. We have sinned against Him, and we deserve His wrath and His judgment and His condemnation and His punishment. We have sinned against Him, and we need His mercy and His compassion and His love and His salvation. We need His forgiveness, and He offers it to us through His Son Jesus Christ. 
who died for our sins and rose again for our justification. He offers it to us, and we should receive it by faith and gratitude and humility and obedience. So, this is the message of this video. This is the message of the Bible. This is the message of God. He is a spirit, a person, and incomprehensible to us. He is eternal, omnipresent, omniscient, omnipotent, holy, righteous, loving, good, and wise. He is awesome, amazing, wonderful, and glorious. And he calls us to worship him and seek his forgiveness. I hope you enjoyed this video and learned something new about God. I hope you were challenged and encouraged and inspired by this video. I hope you will share this video with your friends and family and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. And I hope you will join me next time on Celestial Chronicles, where we will explore more mysteries of the universe and wonders of God. Until then, may God bless you and keep you. Amen.